Hey, this is Matt O'Leary, and this is a review of the new Temples album, Exotico. Temples rode the coattails of that 2010s cohort of psychedelic pop revival bands like Tame Impala. Coming just a little bit late to the party in 2014 with Sun Structures, their debut, you know, after Inner Speaker, after Lonerism, after UMO's first two albums, after, you know, Melody's Echo Chamber and Foxygen's first album. But Sun Structures is truly, truly, truly one of my favorite albums of that scene of that era. Song after song after song displayed lead man James Bagshaw's just encyclopedic knowledge of pop music history, of psych music history, dating back to the Beatles' revolver. Melodies, hooks, melodies, hooks, and more melodies and hooks just came at us with homemade production that didn't sound homemade at all. It was definitely one of the more accessible records of that time in the style, but it also had enough layers of complexity to make it withstand the test of time. They were musically talented, but quickly, very quickly lost artistic relevance on that second album, the fantastical glittery sludge that was Volcano. You know, I listened back um, a couple days ago and it's honestly a pretty decent follow up to the first record. You know, I think they definitely used up their best ideas on that first album, but you know, tracks like I Wanna Be Your Mirror and Certainty really do hold up. Despite that riff on Certainty, which, you know, reminds me of like the Polar Express or some other Disney ripoff. It's pretty consistent across the track list despite being a little bit shallow and pretty artistically inconsequential. And Temples proved to be one of the more steadfast psych pop bands, just really sticking to their guns when the trend of the sound had passed with 2019's Hot Motion. But this one was a hot mess. I'm really this like definitive about music I don't like, but I just think the writing was wildly unimaginative. If I never hear the title track or the Black Keys-esque disaster that is The Howl, then all the better. So with lower than low expectations and kind of a nostalgia for the state of rock music about 10 years ago, Exotico could only go up, right? Well, Let's get into it. First off, Exotico goes back to the well of Volcano with the glitzy electropop sound with hints of driving kraut rock and synth pop and dream pop in there. This time employing Sean Ono Lennon. Yes, John Lennon's son. Perfect for this band, right? I mean, they've always had a John Lennon thing going on. Um, but they, they put him on production in upstate New York, which just brings a lot of fresh sounds across the record. And in true psychedelic form, you've got this surrealist, escapist theme across the album. So, you know, you can expect the vibrancy, the brightness that this gorgeous album cover suggests. And the combination of that escapist psychedelia with this new producer who's got all these tricks up his sleeve, all these connections and resources and instruments around the studio, you know, really leads to the most sonically exploratory and, and eclectic album so far. I love the intro to Crystal Hall, which sets the main riff in this island setting, you know, with chill acoustic guitar and these hand drums before blasting through the speakers with this full force rock band. It's a really interesting drum sound. You know, they've either got this really narrow frequency band that's making anything outside of that cut out. So like a cymbal or, you know, whatever drum it is, just cut once it gets beyond that, or else they've got a really hot input and they're just compressing it with like a really low threshold or something. I'm not really sure. I'm not an engineer, but whatever's going on is a creative way to make the drums just sound massive. Once it gets into the verse, I'm not crazy about how they program the snare sound to just be the same exact sound every time. Um, for a rock band, that is, I want it to sound a little more organic, but it's a pretty minor thing. The songs Meet Your Maker and Time is a Light feature more studio trickery with this dark kind of Depeche Mode, almost synth pop sound, you know, a little, little churches-esque. While the title track Exotico lives up to its title with all sorts of bizarre sound play, you know, the drums sound like this uh, kind of 90s Alanis Morissette sort of thing, which is the 
the persistence, with programmed strings and jazzy, kind of eerie electric piano sounds and these heavenly synth arpeggiators to give atmosphere. The song Slow Days jumps on the always bandwagon with this lethargic dream pop, kind of AOR. Along with Gamma Rays, this is probably the catchiest chorus on the album, even if it's a little simplistic, just going back and forth from the two chords, you know, it's F to G, just one to two. Another production moment that I love is the end of Liquid Air, which just ends with this nice melancholic piano and gives the feeling that the rest of the song was like way more epic than it actually was. But with all the interesting tones, all this fun sound play, you know, it starts to feel like Lennon and his studio mates were just trying everything they could just to smooth over the drab and really lifeless writing across this whole thing. I was originally gonna say like this was overmixed or overproduced or something like that, but I don't really blame them because it's kind of a lipstick on a pig kind of thing. And just production wise, there are so many sounds, so many tricks thrown in here and there that it's like he took a smoothie and just threw every single tropical fruit and every single berry into it. And the songwriting doesn't help that. Ah. Besides like a few very fleeting moments here, I don't think this album really has anything to offer me. I mean, it's just a complete chore to get through. Like that 15 extra minutes in length just feels like an eternity. The songs Oval Stones and Fading Actor and Afterlife just sound like an AI generated temple song. You know, it's like you plugged every element into the machine and it just spat out the stock chord progression and, and melody and riff. Inner space is similarly paint by numbers, you know, it's it's like a mishmash of things indie pop and psych rock bands have done just ad nauseum over the past 10 years. But it's not even the lack of originality that gets me here, you know, a derivative album, fine. You know, if the composition is great, then it kind of gets a pass for me, but... Yeah, it's just very uninspiring. If Sun Structures was a nine and Volcano was six and a half or seven and Hot Motion was a three, then Exotico is like a five and a half. You know, my expectations were pretty low, but after three years, you'd think there'd be a little more to this album. Uh, and it just, it just wasn't it. But I'm interested to know what you thought of it. Was this the you know, scratching that itch of the escapist, surreal, gorgeous, beautiful thing that it was going for, or not. I do really want to give a lot more love to neo-psych bands and psych pop bands and psych rock bands on this channel. I feel like I used to do that a lot, but it's faded a little bit from relevance in rock music. Um, maybe I'll do like a top 10 psychedelic pop albums of the 2010s, something like that. And subscribe to the channel if you want more indie and prog music in your life. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Um.